Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight, and I'm taking a look at the new released version of MX. MX version four, 14 called Symbiosis. Here we are looking at the boot screen for the live, in this case, live USB key. If you've used Annex before, it's going to look very similar to what's on the Annex 13 um, disk, but there are some, some small differences. If you have any questions about the boot options at the bottom of the menu, uh, there is a help key. You can press F1 and you can get a help and it will take you through all the various options and things that um, that the bootloader has available to it. F2, you can set your language. I'm going to leave mine English. F3, you can set your time zone. I'm going to pick New York. F4 is pretty cool. It's got all kinds of, it's got some different strange options. Uh, if you have an HP laptop, some HP laptops will the video um, the backlight will go to zero. Um, some don't. I'm going to leave it blank because I don't need it right now. And if you're an old fan of Puppy Linux, uh, you can boot the live system completely into RAM and if you got the RAM to handle it. And it's pretty fast that way. F5 sets a video mode. We'll go with the default, but if the default doesn't work for you, you can try VESA and SAFE in that order. F6 sets a uh, text size for the console as it scrolls by. I'm going to leave mine at the default. And F7 saves these options, either the, 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 the menu options or a custom line if you do it in the, in the boot, boot line. I will set to save both, I'm, although I'm not making any changes. The top line uh, in the actual menu itself, the MX14 Symbiosis, will take you into the regular default live system. The command line install will drop you down to a console and it'll let you install from the command line if you really want to. The command line installer is limited, so if you've never done it before, I highly recommend the GUI installer. The root and static and home persistence options are options that are available for later if you set up a persistence file, which will allow you to actually save changes to your live system if it's on a CD, USB. If it's on a CD, obviously you're stuck with a read-only file system. Boot for hard disk, if you have left the USB key in there and you accidentally took it in, put it in, but you just wanted to boot your regular system, you can, you can do that. And a mem test, in case your memory test, memory's failed. So we're going to start the default system. Now I'm pulling some trickery in VirtualBox to make my USB key boot in VirtualBox. They don't normally do so. Uh, it's a little slow, so I'm going to pause and wait for the main desktop to crop up. So here we are on the default MX14 desktop. You can see it's a very simple desktop. Got some a nice art back, nice art on for the background. You got a link to the installer, you link to your web browser, settings, a notifier for updates, your network manager, power monitor, an exit button workspace switcher, the main menu which in this case is the whisker menu, and a clock. If you double click on the clock you get a calendar. We're going to look at the installer right now. If you've used the Antics or Mepis installers in the past it's going to look very familiar. But there have been some changes in this version this is a new installer, or at least an updated installer. So on the <coughs> on the first uh, tab of the installer, you're going to choose what disk to use. If you need to modify your partitions, you can run use the Run Partition tool. I'll give you a word of warning: if you use the Run Partition tool, it's going to launch Gparted. If you make new partitions, it is possible in some systems that uh, Thunar the file manager for XFCE will try to mount whatever uh, partitions you create. It may or may not happen. Uh, you can choose an auto install the entire disk or I'm going to choose custom install because I already have partitions set up. I'm going to choose or install my system on SDA1. I'm going to use none or existing. If you just if you have an existing just leave it blank. And, on, and as of this uh, as of uh, 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 MX14, you can actually choose, if you have more than one disk, you can actually choose to put your home partition on a different physical disk. I'm going 
going to leave all this the same, go with XT4 file system, and it's going to do its thing. Now it actually installs really fast. Okay, here we are back, and we see the install is just about done. I'm just going to say select your boot method, and we're going to install Grub for MX14 and Windows. Now we get an option here. We get an option to install either on the MBR, that'd be the default, and that's where the Grub for MX14 will take over all the booting for the system. Or you could actually install Grub on the root partition, which is the partition you just installed MX14 on. If you do that, that means you need to have another bootloader, which if you have another Linux or even Windows, if you can configure it correctly, uh, you, can what, you can do what's called chain loading. You can chain load from the one bootloader to the bootloader stored on root. Now, if this all sounds like hocus pocus and magic to you, I suggest you stick with installing it on the MBR, and it, you will be able to boot both MX14 and Windows if you have a Windows partition um, also installed if you're dual booting. I'm going to install it the MBR. This is a virtual box. I don't have anything else going on. Okay, now we're going to get a list of services that you could enable. These are all enabled by default. If you use, if you plan on using the email client included in MX, which is called Claws Mail, there's a plugin for that called Spam Assassin, which will help uh, do uh, spam filtering. You can leave that installed if you want. NFS is a network file system for Linux. Uh, network file, uh, I don't know if it's system or server, but it's uh, it's kind of like Windows Shares, but it's uh, on Linux. There's other uh, utilities. I'm going to leave everything uh, enabled for for now, especially cups. You need that for for printing. Um, Really, the only ones on here that I would really think about turning off is maybe Spam Assassin if I would, or in Bluetooth, if you didn't have Bluetooth, and Spam Assassin if you didn't have, um, if you weren't planning on using the mail client. By default, anyway, unless you know what you're doing. So here we're going to say we're going to give your computer name. We'll leave mine MX1. The example domain doesn't matter much for me. Samba server for MS networking. Yes, uh, we have that in case you want to set up a share. And in the work group, most uh, this will need to match whatever your network is currently. My, my mine's work group, so I'm gonna leave it that way. Here you can set your keyboard. Mine's US, but there's other options, obviously. Lots of options. Uh, yeah, English US. My system clock's fine. America, it, it remembers your time zone, and actually your language settings from the from the um, from the menu with the bootloader, it'll it'll populate these. Uh, so my time zone's correct, so I'm going to go forward. Now, as we like to say, Debian is not Ubuntu, and you have to have both a user account, which I'm setting up my user account now with password, and a root account. Sudo will work in in Debian-based systems, but it's best to have the root account set up, and we actually make you set the root account up. So you give the root a different password. You can click here to show your passwords if you want. You click here to auto log in if you want to. <coughs> Excuse me. It's now creating the accounts. And then we're going to get a little message here saying we're all done. And there we are. We're all done. Our MX installation is all finished. It's going to ask to reboot. I'm going to say yes. And remembering that I'm running this in a virtual box, so this is going to take slightly longer than real hardware. And here we are at the Grub menu. You can see we have MX, GNU Linux, and also some advanced options. We're going to click that. You can see we're booting up nice and quick. It'll log in with our password that we just created. That's our user password. And here we are, back on the MX14 desktop. Ready to explore to our heart's content and customize our system however we like. Hey, head over to mepiscommunity.org slash MX check out all the info there including the quick start guide and all the helpful docs and check out the really helpful forums at, Mepis, 
at forums.memphiscommunity.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great evening.